Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. If you're thinking of spending money now to receive payments in the future, maybe you'll purchase an annuity or a bond, maybe you'll make a loan, or you're even lucky enough to sell your winnings from a lottery ticket, you'll want to know what the value is today of the payments that you'll receive in the future. That's what present value is all about. And there is a present value function that you can use as built in to all versions of Excel, Windows and Macintosh and the web version, and also in Google Sheets. A similar calculation you might want to do is called net present value. And net present value takes the original cost and an interest rate or a discount rate into account. We'll look at both of these calculations in this tutorial. First, I want to give you some background information on present value. To do the calculation, there are three arguments that you need, and there are two others that are optional. The first argument that you need to know is the interest rate. And this is periodic interest rate. Usually this is specified in years, and you might need to divide this for, let's say, months or quarters. The second argument is the number of periods. Now, let's say that the payment is going to be made four times a year. It's going to be made quarterly. Then you'll have to remember to take that interest rate and divide by four. Or if it's 12 periods, if it's monthly, and you have a yearly interest rate, you have to divide by 12. So just make sure that the interest rate and the periods are in the same units. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with a calculation that has a wrong result. And the third mandatory argument you need to know is the payment amount. And with present value, the payments have to be regular. They have to be the same. So it has to be the same amount every month or every quarter. Let's take a look at the two optional arguments. One of them is what is the amount when all is said and done, when the whole thing is finished? And that's the future value. By default, that's zero. So it'll be zero if you don't specify anything. And that kind of makes sense because once everything is paid out, well, it's paid out and you're done and the value is zero. And the second optional argument is what's called the payment type. And that's simply, did the payments get made at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period? By default, the payments get made at the beginning, and that's what's called type one. But occasionally there are bonds that you'll find where the payment is made at the end of the period, and that's type zero. So the syntax for this function is equals PV, and then in parenthesis, right, because every function has at least one set of parenthesis, it's rate and a comma, because you always have a comma after each argument in a function. So it's rate, comma, the number of periods, comma, the payment, and then if you're going to use future value and type, you put those in separated by commas. Okay, so let's go and do this. If you're on the Tuts Plus website, you could download this Excel workbook that I made for you. It's called Present Value. If you're not there for whatever reason you can't or don't want to download it, you could just type in what you see here on my screen. Also, you'll see what I did here is this workbook has four worksheets. I have a present value and a net present value worksheet, and you can see those tabs are colored yellow. And I also have colored green, the exercises already completed. So you could look at this whichever way you like. So let's make sure we're clicked here in cell B10, and we'll enter the function. We'll say equals PV, open the parenthesis. So for this exercise, I'm going to assume that this is being done monthly. We have 12 periods in the year. So the rate is 2%, right? That's the yearly interest rate. So I have to divide by 12 to get the monthly interest rate, put in a comma. Now, how many periods do we have? Well, I see here I have number of years, so that's 20 years. I need to multiply that by 12, right? 12 months for 20 years, comma. The payment amount, as I said before, it has to be the same number month in, month out. And to use round numbers, i just making this 1,000. It could be dollars. It could be euros. Whatever you want to use is fine. And let's put in these optional parameters. So I'll say comma, and here's the future value. Now, the future value by default is zero, because when all is said and done, it's finished, and we zero it out, but I'll just put it in there anyway. Comma, and this is what I was saying before, is will the payments be made at the beginning of the period or the end of the period? You could double-click the zero or one. I'll just click this over here and uh, cell B7, because I put it in. And that's fine. So we'll close the parenthesis and enter. And now we can see that the present value is about $198,000. Now, if you're seeing this for the first time, you might say, well, wait a minute, that's a negative number. How could I have a negative amount? And the reason is that's an outward cash flow. So there's a couple ways we could fix it. 
we could either go over here to the monthly payment and say that's a negative monthly payment, right? Because if the present value is negative, the monthly payment has to be positive. Or if the monthly payment is negative, then the present value has to be positive, right? Because there's money coming out of one pocket and going into another pocket. But that still might look a little weird if you have some negative numbers on here. So what you could do is this. Let's just double click on this present value function. And because this monthly payment is in cell B3, in the formula here, let's click right before cell B3 and just type in a negative. So we're making it negative, but it's not really going to be all that obvious on the worksheet. And now enter that. So now we have all positive numbers. So in English, what this is telling us is that the value today of receiving $1,000 every month for 20 years is going to be $198,000 at a 2% discount rate. Okay, so now let's take a look at net present value. And in this workbook, I'm just going to click on the NPV worksheet. And again, if you don't have this workbook, you can just type in what you see here on the screen. And I want to give you a little bit of background information on net present value. So the word net in the net present value implies that there's a differential somewhere. And what that differential is, is that net present value looks at the difference between the present value of an investment's cost and the present value of an investment's revenue, the revenue that it generates, which is what we did in the last exercise. Now, here's also what's kind of neat, is that unlike the regular present value function, the net present value function will let you have irregular payments. So the monthly or quarterly whatever payments can be anything. They don't all have to be the same. So in the net present value formula, there are three arguments that you need. The first, like in the previous exercise, is the rate, whether it's an interest rate or a discount rate. And there's also a revenue stream. And that's the value of each periodic payment. As I said, whether they're the same every time or they're different every time, you actually specify them. And the third argument is the initial cost. How much are you actually paying for this revenue stream? The syntax for the function is equals NPV, and then in parenthesis we have interest, that's the first argument, comma, and then the next argument is the revenue stream, and we need to make sure to close the parenthesis, and then we subtract out the initial cost. And like in the previous exercise, we have to be really careful about the signage. Is it plus or minus? If it's a positive number, we have to subtract it. Or if we have it listed as a negative number, we have to make sure to add it, right? Because cash coming into one pocket means cash going out of someone else's pocket. There's also another piece of important information with net present value. And speak of signage, we want to know, well, is the net present value greater than zero? And if it's greater than zero, that's good because it means that the investment is earning us more than it costs. Or the net present value could be equal to zero, which means it breaks even. And if it breaks even, we probably won't bother doing it. And of course, the third possibility is that the net present value is less than zero, which means it earns less than it costs. And then we certainly don't want to do it because it means we're losing money on the deal. Okay, enough talk. Let's go and do this. So you want to make sure to be on the NPV worksheet. And we'll click here in cell B19. Let's put in the function. So we'll say equals NPV, open up the parenthesis, and the first thing it asks us for is the rate. So here's the rate up here in cell B3. Just click that. And to make this easy, I'm going to just leave everything in yearly, no monthly, no quarterly. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to divide it by anything. So put in a comma. And now you see the syntax. As I said before, we specify what that flow of payments are. And here they are. So we have year one through year 10. And I'm simply going to select. I'm just going to click that first number there and drag down to select all the way to the last number. And you can see here in the function saying B6 colon B15. That is B6 through and including B15. Okay, so let's close the parenthesis. Don't enter just yet because we have that initial cost. Now this initial cost here is positive. So I'm going to say minus that 50,000. And that's it. Let's enter it. And we can see that the net present value is $1,656. Now, take a look at something here. This total revenue didn't come into play in the formula at all, but I put that in there just so you could see that 58000 and that 1600 
Because on the surface, if you were not to do this net present value calculation, you might say, okay, I'll spend $50,000, and then at the end of 10 years, I'm going to get almost $60,000. Wow, that's a really great deal. Well, yeah, you're coming out ahead, but you're not coming out ahead like gangbusters. You're coming out ahead a decent amount. And the reason you're not coming out like gangbusters is because, number one, it's going to take you 10 years to get everything back, and there's also this 2% discount rate. And that means there might be situations where the total revenue is still higher than the cost of the investment, but the net present value is negative, and you don't want to do it. So let's go and put in some of these numbers and see what happens. I'm just going to go and let's say year 7, 8, and 9. So let's go over here to year 7. Now that's $7,000. Let's reduce it a little bit. I'll make that 6,500. And that year eight, right now 7,800. Let's reduce that a little bit. We'll make that 7,200. And this year nine, we'll reduce that a little bit also. We'll make that 7,900. So here we have a situation where we'll pay 50,000. And at the end of 10 years, we'll get 56,700. And you might think, oh, okay, great. You know, I'll make $6,700 on the deal. But look at the net present value. It's just slightly negative. So in this situation, even though you'll earn back more than you pay, you really don't want to do it because it's a negative net present value. So using the present value function, we can see how much we're willing to pay for an investment with a constant regular cash flow. And depending if you're on the paying end or the receiving end, you could use this to calculate an auto loan or a mortgage, or maybe somebody is coming to you to ask you to lend them some money you can see what the value is of that transaction. And if you want to kick it up a notch with net present value, you can see whether a cash flow of regular amounts or irregular amounts are worth the initial investment when you take the time and interest rate into account. So I hope you found this useful, and I hope to see you next time.